Phil Ebener here with VideoSchoolOnline.com and another After Effects tutorial. This one is all about how you can make anything animate and react to music. So this is gonna be awesome for all kinds of motion graphics or visual effects. And I'm gonna show you how to do it coming right up. So first, what is a cinemagraph? I'm here in After Effects showing you one of the cinemagraphs that we're actually going to work on. And the actual way you do it is pretty simple. Basically, a cinemagraph is a GIF or a GIF or a video that looks like it's a still image with one part of it or a portion or multiple portions of it being animated and it's looped so that you can basically play it on and on and on and it would continuously play. So here's one classic example of a steaming cup of coffee. Here's another one that is simply a river. You'll notice though that the river is flowing in the background, but in the foreground, it's completely still. And this is one of the more creative ones where it's a glass of beer that's actually being poured, some sort of red ale, and it's continuously being poured, but it's never filling. Now, the things to keep in mind when you're actually going out and filming a shot to create as a cinemagraph is to keep it steady. It's got to be still. And also really pay attention to what the motion is. It should be some sort of repetitive motion. Now, this because typically the beer would actually fill up the cup. It's a more creative approach. Otherwise, like this coffee sh shot, steam coming out of a coffee cup is repetitive and this could last for a very long time. So think about things that are spinning, rotating, moving or flowing that can continually flow and it won't look awkward. So how do you do this? Let's walk through how I did the coffee one and I'll kind of show you how I did the other ones in uh, after we're done. So I'm going to take this coffee video clip. I found all of these video clips from pexels.video.com. Pexels.com is a free place for copyright free videos and images that you can use. So I want to find a part of this video where the steam is kind of in the middle. You can see if I scrub through this that there's parts where the steam is going all over the place. I don't want it to go all over the place. I kind of want it just to be right in the middle. Something right something right around this part of it's probably pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take basically the in and the out point of this sequence or this composition I'm going to put in right there first and then go to composition trim comp to work area so that I know that I'm going to be working with something in this area. Next I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to select the layer on a Mac, press command D. On a PC that would be control D. The top layer is going to be the animated part. The bottom part is going to be the still image. So I'm going to go to a spot where I think it's going to look good as a still image where there's not too much steam coming out over the sides of the coffee cup. So actually something like this looks just fine. So on the bottom layer, select that layer, right click, go to time and then freeze frame. And that's going to create a freeze frame at this point in time for the bottom layer. So if I turn off this top layer over here and scrub through, it's stuck at that time. Now I'm going to turn off this layer so you can see what's happening with the top layer as I create a mask. So for this, we basically use the pen tool. You can use the shape tool as well, but the pen tool allows you to get a little bit more creative and make a custom mask. And so basically we're creating a cutout of where this animation or where the motion is. So I'm just going to scrub through here really quickly so that I can try to see where all the moving parts of this image are. And then I'm just going to start clicking. And then if you click and drag, you get a curve. So I'm going to click here, going to click here, going to click up. And then I'm going to press the space bar so I can actually move the video box or the composition up, down, so I can actually, actually click above the composition window. Then just click back down here. Actually go here and then complete the mask. And I realized that I was doing that on this bottom layer. So if you had done that, you might want to make sure that you want to click the top layer when you do that. If you did what I did, which was a dumb, dumb mistake, just press M on your keyboard for this bottom layer, select that mask, press Command X to cut it or Control X if you're on a PC. Now go to your actual video layer 
and select it and then paste that mask. So Command V or Control V. So this is what you should have <laughs> should look like. Just this little cutout of the steam coming out of the cup. I want to feather the edges of this mask so that it blends into the still image a little bit more. So if I turn on my coffee cup, actually, let me keep it off and go under masks for the animated layer. Go under mask and then we do feather. Just bring up the feather. You can also press F on your keyboard to bring up the mask feather. Something like that should be pretty good. Cool. So now let me turn on the bottom layer. And if I play through this, it looks well. It looks fine because everything else in this image was actually still. There's not really much other moving parts. It looks kind of just like the original video did. Now, if there were other moving parts that were now still, it would look a little different. Now, the thing we have to do now is blend it together so there's not that jump at the end. See, notice how at the end of this video, if we go from this frame to this frame, see how there's a jump? We want that to be seamless. So there's a couple ways to do it, but one of the easiest ways is this way. Take your timeline indicator or just scrub through your timeline. We're gonna go around maybe a second and a half or so, or a second and a half or so into this composition. Then I'm going to split this layer, the video layer. So with this selected, I'm going to press Command Shift D. That's Control Shift D for PC users. And then I'm going to put this first part on top. All right, following along. Then I'm going to move this layer to the very end and line it up. So what did I just do? <laughs> you might be a little confused. I'm also going to move the work area start or the end point of this composition right there and go to composition, trim to comp work area again. So what did I just do? This part right here on this layer now matches up with this part on this layer, right? So if I play from here to there, it loops around and it plays and it's seamless, right? But now there's this jump right here, right there, see? Jump. So we can add a fade to kind of blend that together. So with this top layer now, which used to be the beginning of this clip, press T on your keyboard to bring up an opacity, set a keyframe for 100%, and move that keyframe to the very far right of this timeline. Then at the very beginning of where this clip starts, drop the opacity to zero. So now it's going to sort of blend on and it's going to create somewhat of a seamless loop. Now, depending on how it looks, you might want to speed up the transition or you might need to slow down the transition. And also, depending on how it looks, you might need to move the transition forwards or backwards. Now, there's a couple ways to do that. One trick is with the slip tool. So this looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. You do still see that sort of fade. If I select both of these layers because I want to slip both of them and then press Y on my keyboard and then I hover over one of these clips and I drag to the left, what's basically happening is we are shifting the video to an earlier time. I know it's a little confusing, but if we watch through this again, it's a little bit better. Now we can keep going. Select both of these with Y and Shift. Now I gotta play around with this opacity keyframe because that moves as I slide it. And that looks pretty good. So the Y slip tool is a great way to adjust left to right the video to find a spot that looks good when you are actually fading it. So this is pretty much the process. We're playing this in After Effects now and looping it. To export this and save it so that you can post it online, so it plays like this, we have to export a GIF or a GIF. And we can do that with the Adobe Media Encoder. So with this composition selected or open, go to Composition, Add to Media Encoder. Once Adobe Media Encoder opens up, it should have your composition here. And it probably has another preset that is added right here for the export settings. You probably don't see this right now. So go to the preset browser. If you don't see that, click window, 
preset browser, go into the search field and type in GIF for GIF. Now drag that right on top of the preset that's already on there. And then I want you to change a couple settings. So go and click into the text right here for preset and that's going to open up the settings. We want to change the settings because right now it's the size of the video itself, which for this video is 1920 by 1080 HD. And if you export a GIF that size, it's going to be a huge file size. And so what I'm going to do is under the basic video settings, now that pop up, I'm going to go down to the width and height, uncheck this box so I can edit it and drop the width to 500. And then when I press tab, it's going to change the height accordingly. Now I do that because this image now is going to be saved at about five megabytes. If it was 1920 by 1080, it would be about 75 megabytes. And so that's a large difference. If you want that full quality size, that's totally cool too. A lot of people might want to just put these up on their computers or play it as a, a loop on their backdrop or something or maybe for a website, but for just posting online, you wanna use something that's between 500 and 1000 pixels. Then just choose where you wanna save it and click the play button to export. And then you'll end up with a file like this on your computer that's a repeating GIF. It's a repeating video. Here's the one with the beer that's being filled up. Here's the one with the river that is flowing through and it's just a continuous motion great for posting online. So the process is very similar for these other ones. I'll just show you really quickly, not how to do it, but I'll just show you that the what the mask looks like. So here, if I press M, go to the mask, turn off these other ones, you can kind of see what the mask is. It's just this top one right here. Let me turn on that so you can kind of see. So the mask is just this bit right here. And then same for the beer the mask if we go here turn that on you can see that the mask is right here so it's just this part right here that is being poured right there and this one i just took a really short clip it's about two seconds long and just repeated it cool so that's how you create a cinemagraph in after effects from start to finish if you have any questions let me know Otherwise, I look forward to seeing your work. Please share it with me on social media. Tag me at Video School Online and at Phil Ebner on Instagram. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in another tutorial. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides, and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.